If you have your Bibles with you tonight, thank you, Taylor. Thank you. Have your Bibles with you tonight. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 9, and we'll start with verse 10. Matthew 9 and verse 10. A lot of different prayer requests and a lot of different things going on. And I pray that people will get this message down deep in their hearts tonight because it's helped me. Sister Lona has God is, uh, through the years, it's helped me with this, not this message, but this is what the Lord spoke to me this week, but the principles and the things that are in there. And it goes along with what our Bible study was last night. And it kind of, Scrappy, I was thinking about it as Sister Lona was teaching last night. And this was going right along with the sermon. It's just kind of like that uh, the Lord was letting her read my sermon part of it while that she was teaching. And so God is wanting to move for you tonight. Amen. God is wanting to move for you tonight. So in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 10, it says, And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, said, Behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what it, that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And let me read verse 12 again. It says, But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. And I, I want to ask you a question. I don't want to see any hands or anything like that tonight, but how many of you here in this house tonight are sick in one way or the other? I guarantee that if I ask for a show of hands, there couldn't, not, couldn't one person not raise their hand. That you're not in need of something, that you're either afflicted with something or you're having some problems or you need your joy restored or there's things that you're battling in your life, Brother Scrappy, that people don't know about. And I, and I, I, I want to go with this because the Lord has spoke to me, it was in... I think it was in February of 2003 as I was looking back. And I was, uh, I was praying on my way to Lexington. And, and when he spoke to my heart. And he let me know that his house should be an ER, Scrappy. And I, I mentioned it here the other night. That his house should be a place where everyone can come and receive help for everything. People should not have to be running to the ER all the time or the emergency room for help, but they should be running to the house of God and they should meet the great physician at the house of God because he can supply every need that they have. He's the great physician. And this is what God had spoke to my heart on my way to Lexington. And I was going to the hospital up there, and I, I don't remember exactly what was going on, but I was going up there to Lexington and and. and and uh, he spoke this to my heart. And I want you to see the great physician tonight for those things that if you had have raised your hand or you acknowledged in yourself, that need that you were acknowledging, the great physician is here tonight and he wants to move on that need in your life. He wants to move for you tonight. Each and every one of you. I've been up last night, I was praying in the bed and... <clears throat> actually I was so encouraged from the Bible study, Sister Lona, that I was in the... But he had a prayer, and I, I continued to pray even as I was going, trying to go to sleep. I, I think, Brother Scrappy, I even prayed, as, prayed myself to sleep. But I was beginning to apply the principles in the Word of God and the things that the Word of God tells us to do and the way that the Word of God tells us to do those things. And I was introducing and talking to the great physician during that time, and I could feel just like it was a warmth come all over my body. And God began to move. And so what I'm telling you tonight is that great physician, he's going to be in this house tonight and he's already here and he will meet you wherever you're at and with whatever is wrong with you, he's there to take care of it tonight if you'll just reach out and touch him. Praise God. He has everything that you need to make you whole. Amen. 
Let me read this in Luke also. In Luke 5 and 31, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. That's when we should see God's ER and go to it. That's where he wants us to come. He's called and anointed his people to do the works that he did. He places people in different ministries and different things, Brother Scrappy. He calls them and he places them there to do the work that he wants them to do so that they can minister to those that are hurting and in need. What did it say in Luke 4 and 18? It said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This is what he wants us to do, each and every one of us. That's what he wants us to do. We need to tell people about the great position and lead them to Him. We must preach and teach the Word of God in its entirety. And we must tell them that there's no other name under heaven whereby that they can be saved, those that are lost. We need to tell them straight out, there's no other name under heaven whereby that you must be saved. We must lead them to that great position. Without Him, they will die lost. Without Him, they'll remain sick. Without him, they can have no deliverance or peace in their lives, Scrappy. And without him, they have no hope. No. I was excited as I was beginning to get these words as the Lord was having to write it down. And it says in Acts 4 and 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Yeah. Now that pretty well cuts it down. Whereas that all of these different religions and the false things that are out there that saying there's different ways to heaven, Sister Lona, it's a lie. Amen. It's a lie from the pits of hell and we need to tell people that Jesus Christ is the only way through salvation that they can make it into heaven. He died on a cross for our sins and we need to tell people that, Brad, when we meet them. We need to tell them. In Galatians 3 and 13, it says, Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He who was without sin died for our sin. Yeah. And this is the message that we need to begin to radiate out. Healing is one of the benefits of being a child of God. Yeah. Christ died that we would not have to go to that place of eternal punishment. He took our sins on. He bridged the gap between God and man in his own blood. That's how much he loved you. In Matthew 11 and 28, it says, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Can't you hear him crying out in the spirit tonight and compelling people in their hearts and crying out, come unto me? If you have those problems, come unto me. You that are sick and afflicted, you that are burdened down, come unto me. Look unto me tonight. Look unto the great physician tonight and look to him tonight because he has what you need and he has the, the answer for all of your problems. Learn of me, he says. Look what I have for you in his plea. In John 7 and 37, it says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this he spake of the Spirit, which they that, that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. We have that living spirit, that living water living inside of us tonight, Sister Lona. And he's talking and it's been given to us freely and we have it inside and we need to share it with people. We need to share the gospel of Jesus Christ so that that living water can come a part of each and every one's life. Those that have lost their way, that we need to have them to come in and to introduce them again to the great position and say, He loves you and He didn't turn away from you. You turned away from Him. And He stands with His arms stretched out tonight and He's saying, Come unto me. We must share this living water with all of those that are around us. 
We've all got loved ones that are lost. We've all got people that are standing on the fence and many are standing at the edge of the cliff ready to step off into eternity into a lake of fire. We need to tell them about Jesus and that he loves them. And that if they will simply turn and look toward him, Sister Lona, that he will not turn them away. If he's written there and he's pleading and saying, come unto me, come unto me. John 4 and 10 says, Jesus answered and said unto her, the speaking of the woman, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Did you see how simple it was? If you'd have asked, What do you have in your need in your life tonight? That's too big for my God to do. What need do you have tonight that is too great for God to move upon? I know that we may seem things and may, things may seem to be big. But I'm saying to you tonight, God is bigger than all of those things that you see. Freely you receive and freely you must give to all of those that are around us. In Luke 19 and 9 and 10 it said, And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come unto thy house, for much is also the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to seek and save that which was lost. There's not a family here tonight that don't have people that don't need to know Jesus Christ somewhere in their families. We need to take this message down to heart. The great physician is standing there and he wants to remove that sin. He needs to, wants to wash it away. He wants to permanently, Brother Scrappy, he wants to permanently remove them from that sin that they can have fellowship with him. And that's what he's saying tonight. Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden. Come unto me, I'm standing with my arms stretched out. And tell those around you that I'm standing and I'm waiting tonight. I'm looking to seek and to save those that are lost. We must lead them to him tonight. You have a responsibility as a child of God to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have a responsibility. In 3 John Two, it says, Beloved, beloved, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Look how much value he places on your soul. I wish above all things that thou prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. There's health and healing in him. Amen. There's deliverance in him. Yes. There's salvation in him. All the things that were spread on this table are in him. But it's up to you to come to the table and dine. It's up to you. When they came to Jesus expecting, who did he heal? In Matthew 12 and 15 it says, But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Amen. That's who he wants to heal. He wants to heal everyone. You say, well, that's just one verse. Well, let's look at Matthew 8 and 16 also. It says, and when the eve was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. Yes. And in Luke 6 and 19, it says, the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him, and he healed them all. Amen. This is what we're supposed to do tonight. Introduce them to the great physician. Let the virtue of God flow freely. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost be as far in this place. Let the glory of God so shine in our lives that the enemy can't come near us. We need to begin to do the things that God has been speaking for us to do in the name of Jesus. And although the enemy may be a pushing and may be a pressing, we need to look up and know that what God says is going to happen will happen. And what God says that he will do, God will do. That's just the way it is. God is God. God is God. We need to begin to do what the disciples did in the book of Acts. In Acts 5 and 16 it says, There came also a multitude out of the cities around about Jerusalem, bringing six folk, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every day. One. Now, who did that leave out? He's not leaving anybody out. 
Jesus wants to move for his people tonight and he wants to move for those that are around him. He wants to move for your families tonight that don't know Jesus Christ. He wants to move for those down the road that are sinners. He wants to move for those that are out here, Sister Lona, that we don't even know that are living in sin. Jesus loves them and he wants to move for them. And once you know him, you can lead others to Christ. His heart's reaching out. Many years ago, I was sitting on the couch. <laughs> it's funny how you remember things when you can't really have a really good memory of years back, but I was sitting on a couch down on the, below where we live now in our other house. And I was sitting on the couch, Scrappy, and I was praying. And this has been several years ago. And the Lord, He spoke to me and He said, that he saw my heart and knew my heart. And then he asked me a question. He says, but do you know my heart? Do you know the heart of God tonight? It's something to think about. He sees your heart and he knows your heart. But do you truly know his heart? Do we have the compassion that we need to have on those that are dying, lost in sin, that are on their way to a place called hell? Do we have compassion and do we have the love of God to fill our hearts that when we see someone walking on that path that we have an earning inside of us to try to reach and to pull them out of the fire before it's too late? Do we have that compassion? When we see someone in pain, do we have the compassion that we want to fall down and say, Lord, intervene in their life. Intervene. We're His representatives. We need to introduce them to Him. And as Sister Lona said last night, we need to be that bridge that stands in the gap for those that we're crying out to. When you find out that someone's in pain and someone's having trouble, do you fall down and intercede and cry out and say, Lord, have mercy. God, move. I'm asking in the name of Jesus Do we do those things. Do you know his heart tonight? And when you know his heart, do you keep his commandments? Do we do those things that are pleasing in his sight? Do we live according to the word of God daily in our lives? Or do we just live it on Thursdays and Sundays and, 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 and Tuesdays and Wednesdays when we're at a church? Do we live the word of God? To do the work of God, we must stay in prayer. We must dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And then we can abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We need to be that light that's walking in darkness. And we need to be able to speak the Word of God and let the breath of God blow upon those things that are around us that are dead that they can live. The great physician wants to make you whole tonight. But he needs people to labor in his fields also to do the works that he said that we could do. Will you do the work that Christ tonight? I know I talk about Brother Denver a lot, Scrappy, but Denver's a light. Brother Denver will find someone to talk to about Jesus. And he will lead them to Jesus. I've only led a few people to the Christ as they were on their deathbed. But Brother Denver has led many people to the Lord that were getting ready to be called home that they didn't even know it. That's leading them to the great physician. The greatest healing of all is their salvation of whether that soul will be with Christ Jesus that they can be lived with Him forever. That's the greatest healing of all. It's something to think about. Will you tell them His will from His Word? He hears your cries. This is one of the scriptures here last night that I've used many times through the years. 
And Sister Lona, we brought it back up last night in 1 John 5 and 14. It says, and this is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. I want you to begin to think about that. If you know the word of God, then you know his will. Amen. I don't want someone coming up and being honest with you, Sister Lona, praying for me and saying, Lord, if it's your will. If they don't know the will of God, then they don't need to be putting their hands on me to start with. You need to know the will of God. Yeah. I've just read here that it's not his will that we perish or die lost. It's not his will that you be sick and afflicted. He said, I wish above all things that thou prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So he wants you to prosper in all that you do. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be delivered. He wants the good things for you and that's his will. And when we begin to lay hands upon the sick, we gotta lay hands upon people for anything, we need to begin to speak that word of God. This is the confidence that I have in him. Oh, now, if I ask anything according to his will, he hears me. And I know that if he hears me, I have the petition that I desire before him. And I know that if my petition is before him, Sister Lona, that God is there and that he will begin to move. And I begin to talk to him and I begin to praise him. And I begin to walk forth in that which he has for me. It's the same with salvation tonight. Oh, think about this. It's the same with salvation. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. Same with salvation. I'm going to share a little testimony here. And I want you to think about this. Many years ago, I think I was still up at Heritage. I went in a place and I sat down and there was a lady in there working. I knew her quite well and there's no need to even say who it was. But she saw me and she came to talk to me. And she said... My child is sick, so sick. And said to doctors, there's nothing that they can do. My child needs healed. And I sat down, Sister Lona, and I began to talk with her for just a few minutes. And the Lord began to instill in my heart that healing was no different from salvation. You accept it the same way. You receive it through faith the same way. And I talked to her about this. And these are the words that I said. And I want, I want you to just think about these words. I asked her a simple question. I said, have you ever made a mistake since you got saved? And she said, yes. And I said, what did you do? She said, I asked the Lord to forgive me. And I said, what did he do? She said, he forgave me. I said, how do you know? She said, I just know. And I said, it's no different with your child as we come together, if two of us are coming together. I said, we're going to pray for that child. And just as the Lord forgave you of your trespass or that which you did that wasn't right and you asked for forgiveness, I'm going to pray and we're going to ask God to heal that child Amen. with the same type of faith, knowing that he hears us, knowing that he wants to, and it's his will, and expecting it to be done. I said, just like when I said, Lord, forgive me. Right now, is there anybody in here that would ask the Lord, if you make a mistake and you say, Lord, forgive me, is there anybody that thinks he won't forgive you? He will forgive you. And it's no difference because we read here that this is the confidence that we have if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And so we need to address it the same way. So we prayed and we asked the Lord, Lord, it's your will that this child be healed. This is your word and we're asking in the name of Jesus and we're asking you to move, Father, and to perform your word and to heal this child. And we speak healing into it in the name of Jesus. The next report I had that the child was totally healed. And God is speaking to our hearts tonight and he's speaking to me and I could hardly contain myself last night, Sister Lona, because I knew it's simply confirmation of God's word.
I don't know the needs and every need that's in your life, but I'm telling you the same way that if you went out and you, you did a little something and you said, Lord, forgive me, he's there to forgive you and you know in your heart that you're forgiven, then you need to walk out and say, Lord, I need you to heal me and I know you hear me and I'm expecting you to heal me in the name of Jesus and I know that by your stripes that I am healed. And Sister Lona said last night, you begin to walk forth in that healing each day in the name of Jesus. And God has spoken in this church and he's told people and said every step that you take it's in the name of Jesus uh, and let that healing and continue to walk forth to the full manifestation because your petition has been heard and your petition is before him and God will perform his word if you walk forth in faith in the name of Jesus because it said in the word of God that when they came to Jesus that he healed them all. When they came to Jesus he forgave their sins. When they came to Jesus uh, he cast out the devils. When they came to Jesus. Uh, he did those things for them and God will do it for you tonight. Amen. In Mark 11, 22, Sister Lone, if you'll come. In Mark 11, 22, and Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God or have the faith of God. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. That's not a maybe, Scrappy. That's not a might, but that's shall have them. We need to begin to speak the word of God and preach the word of God and say this is what God's word said. It's not my word. And now Lord, as we've spoken your words, as we're doing what you tell us to do, we're asking you Father in faith tonight to perform your word tonight in every life of every person that's in this church tonight to move upon their needs, upon their families, to heal their children and their grandchildren, to move in the name of Jesus. Those are our prayers tonight. And I know that it's your will because I know that you hear and our petition is before you. And I know it's your will to do that. And I'm asking tonight in faith, can I get somebody to join with me tonight in the name of Jesus and begin to lift up their hands and begin to join. Said, if two shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done of them of my Father which is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, it's time for us to look up. I pray that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would fall upon this place tonight, that the fire of God would run through this place that his glory will be manifested in our communities in the name of Jesus. I curse the power of the enemy that's coming against all of us tonight in the name of Jesus. And I speak life and liberty in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your precious word, God. Satan will tell you that it's a big hard thing, but it's not. I've made mistakes before and I've said, Lord, forgive me. And I've walked on and I know that it was forgiven. Last night as I was laying there, I'd say, Lord, heal me. Many different things that's going on. And I said, Lord, heal me. I got up this morning, Brother Scrappy, and I felt like a new creature. I could feel the warmth of the Holy Ghost last night as I prayed myself to sleep. That same Holy Ghost is here tonight. That same Holy Ghost is wanting to move for you. Does that mean that the enemy won't try to bring things back? Yes, he will. But we simply tell him to leave and get gone. That by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm healed. That because he shed his blood, my sins are forgiven. He's my deliverer. He's the one that I can turn to. He is the great physician. And he's the one that I want you to meet tonight on a personal level in your heart that you'll know that those things which his word said are true. The testimonies, one of the greatest testimonies that back here in the back that Kyler has uh, where he was saying, I shall live and I shall preach and the doctor is saying, you're gonna die. You won't be here in the morning. But that great testimony, what is that? That's the faith of God. Have faith in God that whatsoever things that you say Ah, oh, Brother Scrappy, that God will perform your word. Why? Because it's His will. 
It was his will. It was his will. Don't allow the enemy to steal what God has got for you tonight. God has got healing for you. He's got deliverance for you. You need to make your mind up tonight that no matter what, you're going to go after those things. And yes, I may have to walk just a little bit every once in a while like this, but I'm going to keep walking and I'm going to keep speaking in the name of Jesus and I'm going to keep telling that devil to get out of my face and I'm going to keep saying that by your stripes I am healed and I know that you're my Savior and I'm going to say that I'm going to live and not die and with long life that you're going to satisfy me because I have made you my habitation and I'm my abode. I'm going to live in you. As my sister prays, I plays. This altar's open.